now we have our setup done, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be diving into that grading. But first what we want to do is we want to exaggerate the colors and exaggerate the brightness and exaggerate the, the dark areas in order to just help us match this stuff. So what we can do is put a little dot node in at the bottom here. And I'm going to make three nodes. So I'm first we're going to make a saturation node. And if I hold down shift, select this dot node and hit Y, it will automatically connect that up for me. That's a really great trick. Uh, if you have a big script, save you kind of like dragging this guy all the way up like this. That's what I used to do before I knew that. Just select this, hold down shift, select that and hit Y. Put a grade node in. And we're then going to put another grade node in. So I'm hitting G on the keyboard with my cursor in the node graph here. Shift selecting this and hitting Y to connect that up. So you might be wondering why we put these in. Well, think of these as kind of a microscope. At the moment, we're viewing this image and we might be able to see some values that we need to change, but it'd be really great if we could exaggerate this stuff. A little like looking under a microscope, it's exaggerating all the movement, right? It's exaggerating the size, everything. And we need to do the same. So this is gonna be exaggerating the color. So if I bring this up, you can start seeing how kind of warm this guy is compared to the surrounding values, like the values in the plate. Let's go to our grade. We're gonna put five or four or five in the game. And now this allows me to see those shadows. So you can see how dark this is compared to here, right? You can really see that, it really exaggerates it. And then this one here, we're just gonna bring this all the way down to allow us to see the highlights. And you can see if you kind of, this might be hard to do on the, on the recording, but you can see here how this is fairly bright compared to here. It's a little brighter than this. Um, and you might hear a lot. Now, when I, was a, when I was studying this stuff at university, I remember hearing like, oh, just match the plate. And it's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense because like, yeah, that makes sense because I'm trying to sit this into the plate. But what does that actually mean? Well, you always want to be matching the colors to the plate, right? So like, okay, look, this guy's a bit blue here. So he needs to be a bit bluer. And, and this is what they mean by matching to the plate you always have to refer to a material or something in the plate. So for instance, down here, we have shiny rocks. This guy, this monster's maybe like a wood material. So the wood is probably gonna be less shiny than those rocks. Therefore, I would expect this guy to be less, less bright than the rocks. Okay, now we have a look here. Okay, so what color is this wood texture? Is it, am I expecting it to kind of be browner than the belt he's wearing, for instance, or, or this bit here? If he's browner than here, then he needs to kind of match this color and then get a little bit more bright. Like, it, do you see what I mean? So you always have to be having something as reference to your plate um, in, in everything you do. And that's just gonna really help you. Your comps will get way better if you start doing that. Uh, and you have to treat every single shot like its own thing because in one shot, for instance, this, this material here might be a little bit more tinted purple. So therefore you need to tint your, tint your monster a little bit more purple in order to match it closer to, to that sleeve or something. So once we've got these exaggerated, now we can start going in and actually doing our grading. So some of you might instinctively kind of go towards a color correct node. So if I'm mostly, most of the high end places, we don't really use color corrects. Um, the reason why is because number one, we have a contrast slider here. I've got no idea what that contrast slider does. In my world, gamma is your contrast. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure what that contrast does. For me, like there's no colorist ever that's got a contrast slider. It's always kind of lift gamma gain. Um, and the second reason why as well is these ranges here. So for those of you that don't know, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights here, what they're doing when you drag these sliders is they're only affecting the values that fall into this area. So you can see here, this is your highlights. These are all the values that are gonna be just in your highlights. These are all the values in this little, in this box here, sorry, this big box, that are gonna be affected by your midtones. And these are the values that are gonna be affected by your shadows. And you can adjust these as you see fit to play around with that so you can really kind of finesse what you're grading. But for me, this is very similar to a Luma key. Like I would just key the areas you want to grade. If this was the case, you'd Luma key it. Um, and, and the problem as well is you can really break the relationship between values. If you start kind of like whacking up the contrast of your highlights and then whacking up the saturation of your midtones, that can really screw up your relationship between all these values and give you some very weird results. Um, if your lighting is, is fairly good, um, and even if it isn't actually that great, uh, I would always stick to grade nodes because it's just, 
it, it's going to make way more sense and and you can really see then exactly what you're what you're selecting to grade rather than kind of these um these here under the hood just throw some luma keys in if you need to adjust the midtones or the highlights um so there you go i personally wouldn't wouldn't be using a color correct um so with that in mind we're going to be using a grade today um so for those of you that have used grades before you might expect me now to kind of like okay set my black point let's go here and then we go into our plate and then we'd maybe select our lift um and sample here and then you get these people kind of expecting that to then sit in. Now I've kind of rushed that. No, I haven't done that properly, obviously. But it's that's never going to work, basically. That's never going to make this guy sit in. Um, and the reason why is because there's way more stuff happening in there than just black point and white point matching. There's contrast values. There's the warmth in the highlights or maybe the coolness in the highlights. And there's matching um, your, your black values exactly to certain areas. For instance, some of these areas may not may not have need to be that dark or that bright in the black values um and, and the other thing as well is the problem with this the main problem with this if i'm with you is if i sample a black point which let's say it's this one here and then i sample a lift every single value that's underneath this value i've just sampled will now be clamped at zero so what happens is you're basically losing information now if you do it this way because you can see the grade node by default has a black clamp on. If that isn't if that isn't on, now your values that are kind of um, hit with that black point will basically now go to negative values, as you can see. Um, the minute I do this, now they'll end up at zero. But now what you've just done is you just clamped off all this detail. So unless you really pick the very, very, very smallest value in your whole image, which you could do, um, then it's just going to completely clamp off some nice details that you may get. And your CG may be incredibly underlit, which means, well, let's say you clamped it and then you feel like, oh, wow, I need to brighten this guy up. Now you're going to end up with this kind of obvious banding because you've just clamped a load of values that should be should be brought up. So hopefully that makes sense into, number one, why, I'd use color, why I wouldn't use color corrects. Number two, why I wouldn't do the whole kind of like black point sample, then lift, um, and white point sample, then, then gain. Um, so in, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you exactly what I would be doing in order to match this into our plate.